Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and welcome to my deep dive on React Architecture's best practices. Whether you're building large scale React applications or you're just passionate about front end development, mastering these principles can help you create more sustainable, efficient and scalable React applications. Before we get into the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new here and the like button if you just enjoy my content and just want to support me continue posting more videos because that would help me more than you know. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, before we get into the video, I want to talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Brilliant. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner React developer watching this video or someone who has ears in the industry, you're looking to learn something from my video. And a great place in which you can do the same and master a variety of skills is today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is known as the go-to platform where you learn by doing it. With thousands of interactive lessons on topics like math, data analysis, and programming, Brilliant transforms the way you understand and apply knowledge. I've been sponsored by Brilliant in the past and I've been using their platform for a while now. And what I personally love about their videos is how hands-on they are. Instead of just watching videos, I'm able to engage with the content by doing puzzles and problems that further help me understand more what I'm learning. It's literally what I preach on my channel, which is learning from the ground up and applying your knowledge. And this is what makes Brilliant perfect because I'm able to learn topics that I personally wouldn't be able to find online on my own and practice them on a daily basis. For example, I like to learn topics that I might not be using on a day to day basis, but I am interested in. And a great example of this is when I wanted to learn about AI. Just a month ago, I was able to complete their LLM course where I was able to learn about large language models and how they work. I had some previous experience with working a little bit with machine learning and even some data science. So I kind of had a small basis, but I really wanted to sharpen those skills. And this course really helped me get hands on with real language models and explore how they actually build their vocabulary and choose their next words. In the future, I might even use the knowledge I gained from this course to start a project of my own related to AI. Now, if you're interested in checking them out, visit brilliant.org slash pagerotech and you can try Brilliant for 30 days for free. Plus, my viewers will get a 20% discount on their annual premium subscription. It is completely free for 30 days, so there's really no reason for you not to try them out. The link for it will be in the description. And if you're ready to explore a variety of topics while getting some hands-on experience, just go again to brilliant.org slash pagerotech. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the foundation of React. And obviously, we couldn't start with anything other than talking about React components. In React, the components are the building blocks of your UI. So each of them should have one responsibility and act independent from each other. This is known as a single responsibility principle, and it is a key aspect of writing maintainable and clean code. Components can be classified into two major types, dumb and smart components. Nowadays, you might see some people calling them container and presentational components, but the idea behind it is the same. Containers or smart components are concerned on how things works. So that would include data fetching, managing states, doing complex operations. Whilst on the other hand, presentational components or dumb components focus on how things look, relying purely on the data they receive from props. Trust me when I say this, Understanding and practicing this single principle will exponentially improve the code you write in React and make your React architecture better. And the reason for that is because of one thing only, testability. And by that, I mean how easily you can test your components. The whole purpose of writing unit tests, as you might know, is that we guarantee to ourselves that our components are doing what they're supposed to. You can spend years writing React code and end up writing something that you're sure that works the way you intend to, but because of minute differences, you can be put in a state where it doesn't actually work. So unit testing is one of the main foundations to writing good React code. And when you mix components, like you, you make a component be both presentational and a container component, it is way harder to test them because they have different purposes within themselves. Whilst on the other hand, if you follow the single responsibility principle, and you can write really good and easy tests for your more complex, smart components, 
Now let's move on and talk a little bit about state management. In complex React applications, managing states without any structure can lead to major chaos. This is where state management libraries like Redux and the Context API come into play. A lot of people might wonder why do they have very strict policies on how you should structure your code. And the reason for that is because it's trying to enforce you to follow a pattern because if you don't have a predetermined pattern for how you're managing your states, like I said, it will get into chaos mode. I would say probably using a more modern solution for managing your states, like either the built-in context API or something like Zustan is a really good option. But alternatively, what I've been doing for the past two years is just using a very good data fetching solution like React Query and using the context API for smaller groups of components. I've put on the screen over here two different examples one using the context API and one using just React Query. The difference is that with the context API one, you're putting the data you're fetching inside of the context and passing that data down through your components. With React Query, you can do all of that directly with the library and you would only use the context API for smaller things. Like I said, uh, maybe controlling the theme of your application or some other examples that you might encounter while working. Now, this is a good segue for the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is side effect management. Trust me, handling side effects in React can be very tricky. This effects might include data fetching, subscriptions, or just you manipulating the DOM. Now, everyone knows that the use effect allows you to perform side effects in your React components, but it is crucial to manage your side effects correctly so that you avoid memory leaks in your app, but it's important that you manage your side effects correctly with the use effect so that you avoid memory leaks and affect your app's performance. Well, a simple thing you can do is just uh, make sure to clean up your use effects by just returning a cleanup function, which is something that uh, you're taught immediately when you learn the use effect. A really common example of poor side effect management causing memory leaks is whenever you have a set timeout inside of your use effect. As you can see in the screen, the example I'm showing to you attempts to create a set timeout of 5000 milliseconds where it alters the value of a state called data. Now, that's totally fine until that component disappears from your component tree. The reason for that is because we're not telling to clear the timeout uh, when the component disappears. So the timeout will continue running and that function will continue being executed. The reason for that is because after the component is unmounted, the timeout delay will execute and it will try to set a state value for a component that has been unmounted, thus causing memory leaks. This is bad for application, it causes problems with your performance and it can be easily avoided if you manage your side effects correctly. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is something that I know a lot of you guys might have thought this video was more specifically about, which is how to actually physically structure your project, right? Uh, now, the reason why I didn't spend most of the video talking about this is because first, I already have a video on this. And second, because I don't think it's, it's that plain and simple, like it's not a, a right or wrong situation. A lot of people get confused with how they structure their project. And as long as you and the people who are working with you can understand the structure of your project, I think that's good enough. Now, obviously, there are some good practices, and that's specifically kind of what I'm trying to talk here. But um, at the end of the day, uh, whatever works for you works for you. And not only for you, but also for the people who work with you. Now, just because I know people will want this, I'll show in the screen right now three different folder structures that I think are great examples of what I personally would use in a React application nowadays. I try to separate them to have one with uh, using Redux, one with uh, just a normal simple application and one that is a little bit more advanced and has multiple components. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. So if you are interested in using one of those, you can go ahead and just structure your project that way. Now that's basically it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. Again, thank you so much brilliant for sponsoring this video uh if you guys want you guys can check out them there in the description checking out the channel's sponsors is like one of the best ways you can support the channel so i would really appreciate if you could do so so that's that's basically it really hope you guys enjoyed it and i see you guys next time